Ryan Reese Show from Southern California. This is The Ryan Reese Show. Post your questions using at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook. Are you ready? All right, it's going down tonight, this Saturday night. I have Dr. Ryan Montague, PhD in communications from the University of Missouri and the founder of Divine Opportunity Ministries. Yes, thank you for being on. You got it, my man. (laughs) You know what's funny is uh, we met, we were up at the Bayside Conference, yeah. and you were speaking there, correct? Yep, I was doing a breakout session. Okay, you were, and then I was doing a breakout session, and we got introduced by John, and um, you know, he's like, yeah, hey, you got to meet this guy, he's a good guy, and you know, just when we get introduced by like solid dudes, yeah. we were backstage hanging out, and we ended up having this conversation about your ministry and how um, you, know, you put this ministry together uh, to, to highlight dating. And I just, I love it because I work with young people, and I'm in the church, I'm outside of the church, and it seems like every day, every person dating in the church, it's like a disaster. Because there's so many different things you have, and I'm going to let you actually bring the statistics and what to do and how to do it, um, because it's more than just wait on God. Because there's people that are waiting on God, but they're all entangled in pornography, they're, they have this, all this secret sin. Or there's people that are like, I'm waiting on God, but they're putting their career first and they're becoming this big career woman mm-hmm. and they're just losing track of what's really going on. And in, in my personal life around a lot of people that I know that have been very highly successful, um, some of the stories are like, you know, you have these, um, these women with these massive careers. I mean, they're making tons of money and they have everything, but now they're looking at our life and they're looking at my wife's life and they're like, man... I missed the opportunity. Here I am, 40-something years old or 40, no kids, yeah. even trying to freeze their eggs. Uh, and, and then, you know, they've missed out on this thing, but they desperately want a man and to be married. And it's kind of like, you know, when you go back to Genesis, God created man and woman to become one, to be a unit. And I know it's a picture of, of, of our relationship with Christ, but it's a, it's a biblical thing. And I, yeah. and I truly believe that Satan... Um, really messes, he wants to mess up the whole marriage thing, the whole kid thing, and the whole dating process to destroy what God, it's creation, the way God created it. Yep. So you're here, yeah. I'm going to leave it up to the professionals uh, <laughs> and let you break it down because I'm very curious to kind of hear how this conversation is going to go. Yeah. So how did it start? Yeah, well, it kind of started, you know, I've been a college professor for the last 10 years after finishing the PhD, teaching communication and relationships, family communication, and just hearing the students kind of talk yeah. about dating relationships and then watching culture and a lot of the messaging that they're getting and just realizing like, man, all the dating advice that they are given is just awful. Yeah. And what, what, here, just really quick, yeah. what, just give me um, a highlight. What is the culture saying how to date? I mean, a student of mine, she, like, for example, she, she told me in a kind of a sex ed class in high school that basically the person, the lady teaching the class, said that they should really uh, test out sexuality. And, and, the, and she used the example of, like, you know, you got to test drive a car before, yep. you, gotta, before you buy it. Yep. And so she's, here she is encouraging these students. Just go sleep around. To go sleep around. Yeah. And meanwhile, like the social science research mm-hmm. says the exact opposite is that the, the social science research will show you that uh, actually those that have the highest overall sexual satisfaction are actually married couples that waited until marriage to have sex. And it's actually uh, committed Christian couples that have the highest sex, sexual satisfaction. And that the more sexual experiences you have, the harder it actually becomes for future pair bonding. You know what, that, that, can, that definitely could make sense because when you're thinking about it, and this is, a, I'm a guy that slept around, you know, very, a lot. Yeah. Um, you, and we, you know, I've, we've, we've talked about this uh, openly, you know, I talk about this on the radio show. This, and by the way, this radio show, we can, we can talk about the nitty gritty. Okay. Here, okay. <laughs> um, but all the images that you have, yeah. every partner that you sleep with, you have, it's like pornography. Mm-hmm. These images of you sleeping with your partners over the years, it's just like porn, it gets, it gets, you're having sex. Yeah. So it's in your mind, and then there's different experiences with different partners that could be better or worse or whatever, and then you, if you're going around sleeping around all the stuff, and then you end up with someone that, someone that you aren't, isn't what you had before, then 
it just messes up everything up because yeah. you're you've been so um, bombarded by all these different sexual experiences. Yeah. And this is what people don't tell young people yeah. is that they leave out the practical ramifications right. of these things, which is like, you know, I use the example of, you know, when I was in high school, listening, listening to a bunch of ratchety music yep. is that, you know, years, decade later, haven't heard that song in a decade. <laughs> exactly. And yet I could be walking around and <laughs> something sets off these lyrics in my head mm-hmm. and remembering them like word for word. Mm-hmm. Yet I can study the Bible and struggle to memorize a single verse. Yep. <laughs> and yep. So, but it's the same way, like what you're saying, is that years later, decade later, mm-hmm. or more, those images can flash back in your mind. And we've talked with with people that have had marital sexual struggles because while they're trying to be intimate with their spouse, to no encouragement from them, these images flash so across the, the, the screen yep. of their mind, and it ruins this intimate encounter with their now spouse because of all these things in the past. And that's where this friend of mine that also helped contribute quite a bit to the guide, you know, talks about how this idea that really the, the sexual experimentation, it doesn't make you good at sex, it actually makes you bad at it, mm-hmm. and it makes it fetishistic. Mm-hmm. And basically what nobody tells young people is that when you have all these sexual experiences, eventually when you do get married, you're now essentially teaching your spouse all, what to do in terms of all the things that you learned that you liked from all these other women. Mm, and she's telling her husband basically to do all these things that she learned that she liked from all these other guys. And when you actually like lay it out like that, it becomes ridiculously unromantic. And, but again, nobody is telling young people about some of these practical ramifications mm-hmm. of this. And so really part of the, the whole course development was to shed some light into the darkness, yep. expose a lot of the myths and lies, and give people a tremendous sense of hope. Awesome. That even if you have had a background like yourself, yeah. is that I talk about how being born again is the great equalizer of life. <laughs> is yeah. that we're, yeah. you know, yep. it takes away the crimson stain Ab- and washes it white as snow. And that God can and has done for so many mm-hmm. in terms of providing this new creation. Put off the old, put on the new. And now you get to enjoy what God always meant for you. And that doesn't necessarily mean 100% of the things are going to be wiped off. But in terms of like the the visuals, and there's still some work to be done there. But it is a crazy turnaround for people. I I could tell you this about the visuals, though. Um, You know, as you read the Word of God, you know, that that saying of like wash your mind with the Word of God. When you read the Bible, it's literally scrubbing your brain. And by God's grace, he, he, he removes that stuff. It's the people that continue to act out whether it's pornography or relationships, you just keep like loading up the hard drive. You yeah. know what I mean? So yeah. there is that new life for sure. Yeah, so that's where the, the class kind of originated. And then God just kind of brought me together with this, this guy actually that I met him at McDonald's like five years ago, freakishly brilliant guy, uh, also quirky. He doesn't allow me to use his name, <laughs> things like that. <laughs> but uh, we developed this course, and, and really the, I think the visual for the course, because the course is titled Kingdom Coupling, how to attract, date, and select a godly spouse. And the visual that we use, uh, which our creative director did the artwork for, is these two foxes. And the two foxes side by side, and they got the tails of fire. And it came from a Reinhard Bonnke sermon, the great German evangelist to Africa. And he was given this sermon, he was talking about Samson in Judges 15, about how Samson was wronged by his father-in-law in the Philistines, loses his mind, you know, catches these 300 foxes. He then... Uh, ties their tails together, sets their tails on fire, and sends them, sends them out into the harvest field of the Philistines. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then Reinhardt jumps to Luke chapter 10, where Jesus brings the 72 disciples together, says that he endues them with power and the authority of the Holy Spirit, basically sets them on fire with the Holy Spirit, and says to go out into the harvest field and teach them about the kingdom of God, heal the sick, cast out demons, raise the dead. Mm-hmm. And he says, you know, we should all be such foxes for Jesus that were set on fire and sent out into the harvest field. Mm-hmm. So that's where these foxes became the, the, the logo for the kingdom coupling. That's awesome. Is this idea that if we re- is, is uh, there's a quote from Gary Thomas who said, hell fears a well-matched Christian couple. And so that's what we want to paint this picture for, is that culture kind of says that marriage is where fun, romance, and adventure go to die. But the Bible says that marriage is where fun, romance, and adventure comes alive. Mm. And the great adventure of being able to partner with a powerful, 
you know, God-filled, spirit-filled spouse for the kingdom of God, yeah. there is no greater calling and there is no greater opportunity to do that in this secure covenantal marriage where you have a built-in partner mm -hmm. yeah. for spiritual growth, emotional growth, physical growth, all of these things, yeah. and that you then also get to go out and focus on the kingdom of God and do that knowing I have a secure home life and marriage that, that I'm coming back to. That's what's and up. my partner is in this with me. And it just paints this amazing visual for young people to realize there's so much more. So where do they find this? So uh, easiest way is to go to our Instagram page, which is yeah. Divine Opportunity. So if you go okay. to Instagram, search Divine Opportunity, mm -hmm. it'll pull up our Instagram page. And then in the bio, there is a link to the Kingdom Coupling course. Cool. And so they can, they can find it right okay. there and so get started. So you buy it there? Is it downloadable? Yeah, they okay. can click the link, and awesome. then it'll take them to the website to, to buy and, and step into the, to the course. All right, let's go. So let's go through. Uh, that's perfect. So they'll head over there and check that out, and then let's walk through. Uh, you have 10 steps. If we can make it through. We'll see. It's, yeah, let's see. <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got 40 minutes total left. So, yeah, let's, uh, let's just kind of walk through each one and, and break some stuff down for, yeah. for the listeners. Yeah, so basically the course is set up a, a, along these 10, 10 key aspects that mm -hmm. we focus on. And really, they are transcendent beyond cultures because we've, we've been piloting the course for a couple of years, for yeah. two years now. Mm -hmm. um, one time, just a year and a half ago, we had people from nine different countries wow. on the, the Zoom as we were teaching it. Awesome. So it's really meant to be stuff that is really teachable and, recable and right. replicable. Which is the point is that really at about like 10 years into my marriage, I realized like, wow, we have something totally different. Like, this is crazy. Like everybody else is talking about all these marital issues, all these problems, all these struggles. And we have just been so fortunate, my wife and I. And I also am well aware that I learned all these things about dating since being married. Got it. Is that okay. I didn't know this stuff as yeah. I was going through the dating experience. Right, right. I just got really fortunate and divine appointments and God's grace. Mm -hmm. But started looking at our marriage, others' marriages that were really healthy and, and really realizing, okay, what of these marriages and of the research is actually replicable and teachable? Because there are certain aspects about, like, my wife and I's personality combinations, things like that, right. our family of origin, you can't replicate. Right, right. So we really wanted it to be these 10 things that could be replicated and, te and taught. Awesome. And so the, the main purpose there is this idea that if you can teach people to engage in a dating process that glorifies God, the byproduct of that is that it is naturally competent and, and, and well-structured, right. and it leads to success in dating, because mm -hmm. things that glorify God follow truth. Right. Truth leads to, to these positive outcomes. So the first one is the why, and it kind of comes from this quote from Gary Thomas, who I mentioned. He wrote a great book called The Sacred Search. And he, his book was focused around this idea that the right why will lead you to the right who. Mm -hmm. The wrong why will lead you to the wrong who. Okay. And that's how we structured the 10 different parts, starting with the first one of why. And he used Matthew 6.33, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things will be added yep, to you. That's a good one. In ours, I kind of use what I call the GC3, which is, stands for the, the first greatest commandment, the second greatest commandment, and the great commission, is that our why essentially, and the easiest way I've heard it been put is from this uh, kind of mentor of mine, Dr. Pritchard, who he asked couples in premarital counseling the question of, why is the kingdom of God better for the two of you being together? Which is a powerful question that so few people <laughs> stop why to ask. Why is it ask. better for why, you? Why is the kingdom of God going to be better for the two of you, in particular, okay. b being together in marriage? Because that was the idea, as the Apostle Paul says, yeah. if you can be single, be single. Right, right. How's it? Yeah, exactly. Because you can have more, more time yeah. for the glory of God. Yep. So that's the whole calling on our lives. So this why of that's understanding, awesome. those even just simple questions as you're dating somebody. Is this person encouraging that me? That could stop a lot of relationships right there. Boom. <laughs> and that's the, the point of the course, honestly, is to help people avoid, 90% of it is helping them avoid bad relationships yeah, and so wasted awesome. time and unnecessary baggage. Yeah. So the why is, you know, does this person help encourage you to grow in your relationship and love for God? Mm -hmm. Do they help encourage you to serve others and love your neighbors? Yeah. And do they encourage you to step out into the Great Commission? Mm -hmm. Because most people, when they start dating, that person does the opposite. Yeah, they just pull out of everything. Pull, yeah. out, of, pull out of the friendships. Yep. And pull out. That's why, you know, sometimes you got friends start dating and they disappear. They drop off the face of the earth. Yes. And then they emerge like six to nine months later and you're like, let me guess, you broke up. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, welcome yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, it's so good true. to have you. So that's kind of the first one okay. of understanding the, the why. Okay. That's awesome. To it. Okay. So then the, the second one, what do, we, what do we got? So the second one is intentions. Mm-hmm. So the, what are your intentions for dating and for marriage? And so understanding both your intentions, but also the other person's intentions. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of the great mystery that they're having to navigate is, is this person in it for a one night stand? Yep. Is it, this person in it for a casual hookup? Mm-hmm. Are they in it for serial monogamy? Which is basically, it's not, it's somebody that has sex, but only in the context of a relationship. Right. But they do, anytime they are in a relationship, they do have sex. Mm-hmm. And then, or are they in it for the covenant of marriage? Mm-hmm. And uh, then understanding, helping people understand what actually is marriage? Mm-hmm. And even understanding kind of the simple question of not realizing that marriage is this incredible institution that's meant not just for our personal safety and growth mm-hmm. and fulfillment, but also it plays a huge role for family, right. for community, societal, you name it, it the spread is, is ridiculous. It seems like, I mean, obviously when you look at culture, it's, it's the marriages and the people that I'm kind of seeing or, or come across is like, they're, they're dating. They're living like they're married. Yeah. They're basically living together, having sex, but they just won't get married. Yeah. And that's kind of the thing. Yeah. Like no commitment, you know. And that seems. Yeah. And and I, I look at it and I'm like, it's horrible because the girl is giving the guy sex because he doesn't. She doesn't want to lose him. Yeah. And he's hanging out with the girl. He doesn't. He's not going to marry the girl because he's getting sex. Yeah. It's, 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 they're getting played basically. Yeah. And what they, you know, they don't realize is that women tend to see cohabitation moving in together as a step towards marriage. Right. Okay. Whereas men tend to see cohabitation as a way to delay marriage. So again, the intentions and the expectations are totally crossed. Right. One's thinking one thing, the other is thinking the exact that, that, opposite. And, and then that's what I was thinking. And then they start having kids too. So they're like, oh, we're one step closer, but yet yeah. they're not married. Yeah. Or, you know, I think it's four out of 10 at least. Uh, four out of ten babies are born to unwed parents, mm-hmm. and so most of that is is not even happening intentionally. They're right. getting pregnant, and a lot of that also leads to what we call, uh, what social scientists refer to as nonsensical loyalty, or kind of it's the consumer lock-in idea that the more invested you become in something, the harder it is to leave. To leave. Got it. Even when you know that it's it's going it's not going well. Because even, I think it's like three quarter, they did a research study where they talked to people that, that were divorced. Mm-hmm. And they asked them, at what point did you kind of see the potential for the divorce coming? Yeah, when did they say? And a high percentage of them said while they were engaged. Really? So they saw it coming. But they had the sunk cost fallacy kind of going on, which is like, I've already invested so much. Mm-hmm. Or we've already got, people have already booked hotels and sent presents and... Or, you know, we've already taken this step and that step and the next step. And so they felt this nonsensical loyalty just to continue on, even though they knew kind of going into it, this probably isn't going to work. Yeah, I've heard, I've heard stories where people, they, they think that the, the relationship's bad. Because we counsel a lot yeah. of people. The relationship's bad, and they're like, oh, well, we're talking about having a kid. Like, if your relationship's bad, they think having the kid is going to make it better or yeah. fix it. Or the relationship's bad, you know, we're just going to get married. And we yeah. think oh, if we just get married, it's going to get better. It's not yeah. going to get better. It's that commitment no. that you're talking about. Well, and again, John Gottman, he's the foremost researcher on marriage and divorce. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was the first psychologist to be able to predict divorce with over 90% accuracy. Really? Uh, doing all these measurements and studies. He's been doing it for four decades. Mm-hmm. And he, he, he basically referred to babies as a hand grenade for marriage. <laughs> that makes sense. Is that it actually does the opposite. People think it's going to bring them together, yeah. but it actually, about 67% of couples yeah. report a significant decline in relational satisfaction within the first year of the baby being born. Right. Yeah. And Do you then, have kids? Uh, yeah, I've got three. Okay. So keep going. We're going to get into that. Yeah. <laughs> so part of that is that a lot of couples don't recover from that. Right. And right. so they continue down that path because, you know, the kind of typical protocol is to have another kid about two years later which just extends that and makes it harder and harder to get out of, especially when it wasn't built on a healthy foundation right, to begin already. with. Exactly. And that's why marriage is so important and selecting the right person is so important, which is why we focus on teaching this, is that Neil Clark Warren, who's the founder of eHarmony, 
He basically said, selecting a spouse is the most underappreciated challenge of the human experience. And I refer to it in terms of effect size. Effect size in research and other things is just this idea that uh, it's, it's variables that have a high degree of influence mm-hmm. in the circumstance si- situation of life. And so this person that you choose to marry outside of your decision to follow Christ is the single biggest predictor of your life, your emotional state, <laughs> your physical health, that, yeah, that's you true. name it. That's so so it's such a hugely important thing, but nobody has ever taught how to date or how to select. Mm-hmm. They're really just kind of either going based off the media or their best guess. Mm-hmm. And that's where this course really comes in to help people understand that this is a huge decision and one that will have consequences for the rest of your life. So let's help you do this the right way and, and, and break that down. And that's where these kind of 10 things get into. That it. is amazing. That is, that is, I'm blowing my mind. Because, I mean, it's, it's stuff that you just don't think about. Yeah. But it's so true because, you know, when you're dating, you're like, oh, man, she's hot. She loves Jesus. But, like, if this girl or this guy is crazy and he has all this underlying things going on, yeah. this guy's going to affect you or girl is going to affect you spiritually. Physically, you were saying the health. I mean, you, you can be having anxiety, stress. Like yeah. this can literally eat you up from 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 the inside yeah. out. Wow. Okay. Cool. So, what do we got for number three? All right. So, number three is expectations. So, what are your expectations going into marriage? Mm-hmm. And that a lot of it comes from again our family of origin has a tremendous influence in okay. this. And that's why you find you know most individuals that come from relatively healthy families, right. relatively healthy marriages, or at least stable marriages, yeah. even if it weren't healthy, but the parents were committed right. to the end. Right. They usually have a desire for marriage of some kind. Mm. The, the people that I run across that have really no desire or little interest in marriage tend to come from families of divorce, mm-hmm. if not multiple divorces with their parents. Right. And so, I mean, I think the student that had the most number of divorces was a student many years ago. I think her dad was married and divorced five times. Mm. So that leaves a lasting impact in terms of her expectations yeah. for marriage and what she's hoping to get. Exactly. So part of that is, is understanding, uh, part of that that we build in is ha- helping them develop a must-haves and a can't-stands list. Mm. So what are you expecting out of this person and out of this marriage? And so we have them come up with a list of about five to ten things in terms of their must-haves, their non-negotiables, and then five to ten of their can't-stands. But we're also very careful to phrase it in terms of your five to ten must-haves in a future spouse and co-parent to your future kids. Right. Your can't-stands in a future spouse and co-parent to your kids. Mm-hmm. Because what most people do, even if they do come up with a list, it's based upon a boyfriend or girlfriend. Right. And this uh, social scientist, researcher, uh, Logan Yuri. She kind of talks about it as most people are looking, creating a list based upon a prom date. <laughs> right, Somebody right, that's yeah. going to be fun, good looking, <laughs> and, yeah, and yeah. it's not based upon future long haul, long haul journey. stuff. And yeah. that's where Gary Thomas says when you come together for superficial reasons, you divorce for superficial reasons. Right. So we got to make sure that that's, and it's a healthy sized list. Some people have a list of like 50, 60 things, and you're looking at it, and it's got like measurements. And it's like, what, are you buying a pair of pants? Or are you like, <laughs> what, what are you doing here with this? So it's helping people to really come up with a genuine list yeah. that's helpful and sets the expectation. And that's incredibly important because then when you're dating, you now have this list in the back of your mind. Right. So if I'm looking for somebody that's loyal and faithful right. or a d- devoted Christian or whatever it might be, mm-hmm. or they desire a certain number of kids, right. well, now I'm, I've got some questions to ask and yep. explore. Mm-hmm to see if this is happening. And so that's where we're trying to also teach people how to cut your search time in half. Right. Eliminate baggage. You could be, yeah, you could be wasting, person. you could be wasting so much time on this. Well, most people, they're looking for the hot girl or like the hot guy or whatever. Yeah. It's just so superficial and they're just yeah. wasting time when they need to get down to the nitty gritty. Like what do they really, what are they really looking for and what they need yeah. for this long? Do they want to have kids? What's their, what's their, What's their career? What are they trying to do with in, in life? Yeah. Are you just trying to be uh, 18 and get married and, and, and work at McDonald's your whole life? Yeah. Or like, do you, do you trying to, you know, yeah. you might want to wait a little bit, yeah. get some education, get some money in your pocket and figure things out before just, just getting married just to sleep around or have sex. Yeah. 
And then the life goals are kind of huge. Is, yeah. Is like, where Very is important. this person going? Where are you hoping to go? And do your life goals align in terms yep. of the compatibility factor that goes in with it is, is huge. I, I saw, you know, I'll just jump in here on this one thing. I, there was this one person that they, they came from out of country. They were getting discipled to become a missionary, went to all the Bible school, be a, become a pastor, married a, a, an American girl. And when everything was all good and whatever, I mean, I don't know, I guess they liked the, you know, salt and pepper, the different vibes, different colors. Yeah. And they got married, and then that per the girl is just like, you're not, you're not going to be a pastor, you're not going to do ministry and all that. And literally, he left yeah. from another country, came here, did all this training for years, and then that was it. Mm -hmm. And who knows what now. Well, and that's actually the, the worst thing that could... So one of the worst things that can happen to you in dating is what you described. Mm -hmm. Because, again, if our intent is to glorify God... Right. The worst thing somebody can do in terms of being a counterfeit is to pull you out. Is to pull you out of that relationship with God. So yeah. that's where they kind of pretend and play the game long enough to get in and then try to change the person. But one of the worst things is that they actually pull them away from God. Yeah. So I mean, there's a lot of bad things people can do to you in yeah. dating and, and marriage. Yeah. But when we take a step back yeah. and look in light of eternity, right? Not just the the nitty gritty of everyday life. And that's where, you know, Jesus says to Peter, he says, get, get behind me, Satan. Right. For you're seeing things merely from a human, human point, point of view, view right. not from God's. Right. So when we see things from God's point of view, we realize that one of the worst things that somebody can do, obviously there's tragic things in terms yeah. of physical and emotional abuse, but ultimately pulling them away from God and their God calling on their life is you got to be careful with that. Well, that's a, that's a great point. We're, we have like three minutes left. Do you want to kind of touch on number four? Yeah, uh, we'll do we'll do that. So the the, the fourth one is boundaries, which okay. we kind of opened up with a little bit. But the idea of the boundaries, just to give you kind of an analogy, why this is so helpful, and this is spiritual boundaries, uh, emotional boundaries, and physical boundaries. But you've got kids. I don't know if you're taking your kids bowling or not. I actually recently have. Okay. Did they have the bumpers? Did you guys use the bumpers? We didn't have the bumpers. No, no, not this one. Okay, so if you've ever taken kids bowling between we need the bumpers. between bumpers and no bumpers, yes. if you don't have the bumpers, it's like gutter ball, gutter ball, gutter ball, gutter ball. Yeah. That'll be $52. Yeah. And you're like, fantastic. That was a yeah. great trip. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, but the bumpers, especially for kids in, th in that analogy, you get it. Like the reason that that makes bowling so fun for kids mm -hmm. is the boundaries. Mm -hmm. Because now they can play and have fun. Mm -hmm. Because they know they're not going to go off and veer into the gutter. Yes. And it's yes. the same way in dating. You've mm -hmm. got to actually be able to understand boundaries and be able to articulate them. And when you have boundaries and accountability, it actually makes dating so much more fun. Yep. Just like bowling, because you know you're not going to veer off into the gutter. Mm -hmm. You know you're not going to veer off into being taken advantage of. Yes. And so that is kind of the analogy that, that sets the stage for that. And... Uh, so that's kind of the, the beginnings of it. The other kind of visual that I give is that uh, I took this picture of my daughter one time. We were at my son's soccer game, and it was blazing hot, not a tree or a bit of shade in sight, and she's standing in front of me. And so I get into the game, cheering everything, and then I look down, and my daughter was gone, and I look, but I look down at the ground, and, and she, had lay, she had seen my shadow. And she's on your shadow. And she laid down in my shadow. And then I later came across Psalm 91.1, which says when you... Those that live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. And that's what God's biblical boundaries do, is that it gives you protection from exposure to the elements that would other, otherwise cause you to get burned. Boundaries are super, super important. Um, I, everyone you know, that I talk to, I say, guys, you can't put yourself in situations like, oh, I'm going to go to her house and go pray with her at 10 o'clock at night. I'm going to go lay my hands on her. Yeah, you're going to lay your hands <laughs> on her. Like, all of a sudden you get a, a report. Hey, man, I, I slept with her. Well, dude, you were at her house at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. No one was home, no parents. Well, what you think? What do you think was going to happen? Yeah. I mean, aren't you, like, really attracted to her? No, duh. It's like boundaries are that safe guy that keep you in line so you don't get into trouble. Yeah. So crucial. We're going to come back to the boundaries uh, right after the break. I have uh, Dr. Ryan Magoo in studio. He's a Ph.D. in communication at the University of Missouri and the founder of Divine Opportunity Ministries. And, again, I met him up at, uh, uh, where was that again? Bayside. Bayside. Bayside Church with John, and it was an awesome event. And I'm looking forward to uh, – to going back there again and, and, and partying with those guys. So 
Um, I would encourage you guys to go to YouTube, type in uh, Ryan Reese, uh, click on it, and you will get all the past radio shows. Go to the Whosoever's. You can get those too. And then go to the Whosoever's.com and book us for tours. We want to come and bring the Great Commission to you guys. Book any of the ambassadors. We'll go to schools, churches, college, universities, anywhere to bring the gospel. We love you guys, and we'll be back in two minutes right after the break. More of The Ryan Reese Show coming up. Post your questions at Ryan Reese on his Instagram, Twitter, and or Facebook. We're going to Montana to Great Falls. Are you sure? Yeah. We're going to pick up Sonny. He's the co-founder of the Whosoever's Movement. So this is going to be sick because I haven't been on a Whosoever's tour with them forever. We can't get into schools. Let's... Let's just go to what we know, skate parks and whoever will have us. This is a tour in the middle of a pandemic, so these are the uh, obstacles that you're going to run into. This is our only last day to get the word out for tomorrow. kids. Because tomorrow, yeah. if they don't know it's tomorrow, then they ain't going to be able to make it. it. We're going to get the flyers out to them today, and that goes down tomorrow. The whole community of, Mont of Great Falls, Montana is going to come out. Everywhere we go, people have heard about it. It's been all over the news, and they all said we're rolling out. But the way y'all talk to us today, it seems like y'all really understand what we go through, you know? Now, back, back to the Ryan Reese Show. All right, we are back this Saturday night. I have Dr. Ryan Magoo in studio, PhD of communications at the University of Missouri and a founder of Divine Opportunity Ministries. We've been talking about dating. We've been talking about boundaries, um, what, what, are, what are the three, uh, the first three we started with? So why, why, intentions, mm -hmm. expectations, boundaries. Right. Okay. So we got those and there's a booklet that people can go to your website and purchase to walk through this. Yep. And I mean, I'm pumped. I'm downloading it. I want to go through it just to read through it all and yeah. just get all the knowledge from it. So where can they go and download this on your website? Yeah. So the easiest way is to go to Instagram yep. and search divine opportunity mm -hmm. and that'll bring them to our, our Instagram page. Yep. And then in the bio, there's a link for kingdom coupling, got it. the kingdom coupling course. And that'll take them to a site where they can purchase the course and then start going through the recordings mm -hmm. and then also have access to, we have over a, it's, it's a lengthy guide. It's over 200 pages, okay. <laughs> but okay. it's just and crazy. And recordings filled. too. And we've got the recordings and we're actually going to be up, upgrading those over the course of this year. Yeah. And they'll also have access to all the future upgrades. We're going to do an alumni group. Dude, that's awesome. And stay connected with people. Mm -hmm. Then we'll have access to ongoing live Q and A's yep. and also, you know, uh, other events that we're going to do down the down the road incredible to connect them with other singles in their area dude that's incredible and this is yeah. this is a huge thing i mean we we i don't want to take too much time on this but you know the way the culture is you know dating and marriage and all that's not a thing and and what it is it's just distorted so this is so crucial yeah. for these christians they yeah. need to know how to date a lot of christians i think it was in barner barner group they were talking about a lot of these young christian kids in high school and stuff and college they said they're watching porn to learn how to have sex yeah. so i mean Anyway, that's a whole nother conversation. Yeah. Well, it kind of fits with like the boundaries we were talking oh, yeah, the about. It's right? like this whole idea that, you know, because the average age of first marriage now is about 30 years old. Okay. So when you think about the sex drive kicking in at what, like 14-ish? Mm -hmm. That means if you're hoping to remain sexually pure, you know, till, till 30. Right. I mean, most guys either arrive at marriage at 30 with a 16-year-long pornography addiction. Yes, this is true. Or like your other option is like 16 years of cold showers. Like how, yeah. how are you realistically going to pull that off? Yeah. And that's why it's important to kind of encourage. Uh, and also just to, to let people know, like, like that's crazy hard. Yeah. You know, when yeah. we, people talk about, and, you know, I'm hesitant and kind of careful to use the word like purity because people have a visceral reaction to that from bad youth group days and things <laughs> yeah. like that. And the reason that they do is yeah. because purity was kind of used as a rhetorical device to get young people to keep their pants on. Yeah. And then the same youth pastors that were preaching purity ended up having affairs. Yep. And story. the whole point of that is that purity is never more or less important at any point in your life. Is that purity is just as important for us as married, married men as it is for the single guy. Yep. And, but it's also then trying to help these people understand the practicality of how to walk that out what I, what, with accountability, what, and, I, what I'll tell um, purity is exactly it has it has that 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 
that vibe to it. When you say it, people are like, oh, purity. But I'll say like holiness, you know, because God yeah. is a holy God, right? Yeah. And if we are, if we have the person of the Holy Spirit in us, then why are we putting garbage in? If, if, if we truly have God, Jesus Christ's Spirit, the Holy Spirit inside of us, yeah. then we need to be holy as He is holy. And that's purity. Yeah. It's righteous living. Yeah. Well, in those boundaries, too, the way to help people develop and see the significance of boundaries is that God's boundaries are meant for provision and protection. Right. So he's not just trying to be a, a buzzkill. Yeah. <laughs> it's like if, yeah. You, if you view God as a killjoy, you're living in an alternate universe where the actions don't produce the kinds of consequences that they do. Right. So he's trying to shelter us from that. But also the biggest way that I've found to help people in that is, is you know, I use the example of like when you think about a bank versus a dry cleaner, mm -hmm. which of those two has more boundaries, protection, and, and guard right. the bank yeah. because we know, we recognize the value that's inside of it. Right. The dry cleaner at best has half clean clothes, <laughs> like, <laughs> like on a good day. Yeah. Uh, but the bank we know it has tremendous value inside. So we recognize anything that has values needs boundary protection and a guard up mm -hmm. around it. And so that's where people got to realize is that, is that they have tremendous value that they were made in the image of God, mm -hmm. that they have crazy amount of value, that God bought you at a high price, the blood of Jesus Christ. Right. That on your life and realizing that then lets you know, wow, there is value and significance here that is worth guarding and, 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 and putting up some boundaries. Because the people that tend to struggle the most with boundaries tend to be the people with the lowest sense of value. Right, right, yep. So they struggle to see the value that they have, and they actually are engaging in relationships, trying to get value from either being in a relationship or being with this person, yep. rather than understanding that they have innate value through God and the creation of them. And that's where it's bolstering people's identity in Christ, their value in Christ. Then out of that comes the boundaries, that it's not just putting slapping restrictions on people yep. just because... You know, we're trying to be, again, yeah, the, yeah, the buzzkill. Exactly. No, that's, that's good stuff. I like that. Okay, five. So the fifth one is compatibility. Mm. And this really kind of comes out of this, this mentor of mine, Jim Burns, who's the president of Homeward Center for Youth and Family. He was the first one I heard refer to this idea of high-maintenance marriages versus low-maintenance marriages. Mm. And as he was describing it, I realized, like, wow, like that's, that is the blessing and the fortunate part of my wife and I's marriage is that we have a really low-maintenance marriage. Again, I didn't know any of this when I was dating, just got super blessed yeah. and, and fortunate, yeah. but we ended up with a really low maintenance marriage. It's just, it's, it's easy because of the compatibility around both being God first. Right. And again, the GC3, seek first, the, you know, and seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and, and all these things will be added to you. So right. we also, the combination of our personalities. So what does a suitable helper, you know, the Bible says that God saw that it was not fit for man to be alone, so he would make a helper that's suitable for him. So what does a suitable helper look like for you and for your personality, for your goals, for your life stage or station, and the future that you're, you're hoping and desiring for? And then what would be a suitable helper in that? And so that helps people to really kind of unpack and understand what is compatibility and how does that lead to a healthy marriage versus one that's going to be high maintenance where, you know, a lot of people, again, dispelling myths, hear the phrase of like opposites attract. Mm -hmm. But Les and Leslie Parrott, who wrote a great book called Real Relationships, did done tons of amazing stuff. They say opposites attract and then opposites attack. Opposites attack, yeah. And so what a lot of people don't realize is that going into marriage, even if you're crazy, you know, some people are saying like, well, you don't want to be, you know, you don't want to find a clone or somebody of the exact nature of you because then you can kind of risk being redundant in a relationship because the suitable helper brings. Yeah. But I found that even if you think you're crazy similar, like I thought I was, you know, so similar to my wife. And then in marriage, what do you discover? Do you discover more similarities, more differences? Differences. You discover more differences. Yeah. So if you start out already as opposites and then go into marriage, what are you going to discover? even more differences, yeah. more areas of op opposition and versus starting out really similar. And we teach people, you know, what are the core things that you really need to be similar yeah. on? What are areas where you can be different? And then where are you, areas you can be different that actually is helpful yeah. to be different because you, you bring different skill sets. Yeah. Yes. And, yes. That, that operates really good in our marriage, the different skill sets. So that's the compatibility factor of realizing that's that awesome. the suitable helper is meant for two things. One, to help you glorify God. Yep. 
Number one. And, and That's two, a seek ye first the kingdom of God, always. Number one. And they actually kind of make it easier to follow God and to be good in that you actually have, an, again, an expression for sexuality and the fulfillment of that. So it actually helps to glorify God in and through that as well. But then the second part is to is the division of labor, is that life is one directional in that it only gets harder right. as you grow up. Mm-hmm. Never, get, never gets easier. Yeah. Nope. It always gets harder. And so part of that is that the division of labor is that you have this suitable helper that is able, you're able to divide and conquer on things. You're handling some of these tasks. I'm handling some of these tasks. You know, I've got somebody kind of watching my back. I mean, my wife prayed for me and, you know, before I headed here today. I've just got somebody interceding for me, but also helping with the division of labor. Otherwise, it becomes really taxing, which is why we see kind of the increase of anxiety and some of these other things, because life becomes stressful when life becomes more complex than you are competent. Mm -hmm. So if your schedule is, is easy and it's really light, do you have a lot of stress? No. No. But yeah. when it's like, oh, I crammed in a little too much here. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Over, it's stressful, over but you yeah, can also kind of call on a partner to help that fills that, some of that yep. compatibility and yep. works. That's there. awesome. That is awesome. Okay. So we got number six and we got 15 minutes. Okay. Let's do this. So number six <laughs> is... I, I'm telling you right now, people are hyped right now on this radio yeah. show. I'm, I'm hyped. <laughs> so the six and seven will kind of go together. Okay. So number six is aesthetic display. So what does that mean? It's probably the first question. <laughs> aesthetic display. But aesthetic display is really your communication from one to many. So aesthetic display would be things like, uh, you know, your website, your social media profiles, right. the things that you're posting on social media, the things that you're following on social media, your dating profile, anything that's public and that can be discerned and seen is that aesthetic display. Right. So the question becomes, who are you attracting and why? You know, we kind of use the example of the bat signal. Is in the Batman movies, right. they, whenever they're in trouble, they shine the light up into the sky, the Batman symbol, and Batman comes. Right. So they know who they're trying to attract and who right. comes. You right. don't shine the Batman <laughs> signal yeah. into the sky yeah, yeah, and, and Spider-Man jumps out. Yeah, yeah exactly. It's like, you know. So part of that is, is understanding what's your bat, like what are you sending out? What values are you projecting to the world through that and who's it attracting? Because you oftentimes hear people say, well, I don't know why I keep attracting these guys. Or I don't know why I keep attracting these kind of girls. It's like, well, it's probably not a giant mystery. <laughs> if we actually sit down and look at your different social media profiles, yeah. we look at your clothing. Yeah, yeah. We look at, you know. Where are you going to meet these yeah. guys? All these things are, <laughs> are attracting some people and not others. Yeah. So that's where we want to help people attract the right kinds of people. Gosh, this and is good. Yeah turn away the others because part of it that I say is like you want to get ghosted for good reasons. And, and you know the thing too is a lot, you know, like say some of these girls, we'll just use some girls for an example, like they, maybe they're just, they're just raised, they're the fatherless or whatever and they're just raised, they, they should be dressing like this to attract guys but this is not it. So yeah. this is why this guy's so good to just give them, they don't know yeah. and they're just getting this correction and their whole life can change in this whole yeah. atmosphere. I mean, I just had that conversation with my eight-year-old daughter. Right. <laughs> it's like yeah. it's starting early. Yeah. In yeah. That. yeah. Yeah. So that's the aesthetic display. It's the true. self-presentation kind of goes with it, which is in the dating context. And this is so the self-presentation is more kind of one-to-one or small group stuff. But are you um, accommodating to other people where you're pretending to like things a little more than you actually do, or pretending to not like things that you actually uh, that you actually like? Right. And in order to be accommodating so that this person likes you more. Yep. And, you know, we've known people that. Well, that's when they're, you're dating the representative. <laughs> yeah, exactly. A hundred percent. Yeah, because we've known friends that, you know, the, the girl, she was pretending to like football more than she did. Oh, yeah. So she, when they were dating, she's watching football all day with them, hanging out. But now that they're married, she complains about how much football he watches. So those kinds of things where you want to be genuine and not accommodating because, again, you want them to fall in love with you for the right reasons. For they who want you to are. get yeah. them to fall in love with you for who you actually are. Yep. And there's a quote that says something to the effect of, like, you'd rather be hated for who you are than liked for who you're not. Yep. And so you want to be really clear about that and try to be, you know, part of this is instituting emotional intelligence into all these 10 things. Right. So how do we actually do that? Mm-hmm. And in an emotionally intelligent way that doesn't scare people off but does allow us to lead down the direction of a healthy, developing relationship for the right reasons with the right people. That's amazing. So that's the aesthetic display and self-presentation kind of going hand in hand. So that's seven and eight. No, six, six, six and seven. Six and seven, yeah. Okay. 
So eight? So eight is the tools for evaluation. And so we, in this section, basically for every desired trait you have in a partner, so something you would value and like to see in them. Oh, like to see. Like to see. Mm -hmm. There's a way that that can be counterfeited. Mm. So it, we help kind of expose, there's really like 14 that we have in the course guide in terms of potential values or desired things, but how it's, it's counterfeit uh, counterpart, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So here's something you would like to see in, in somebody, but here's how it can be counterfeited. So how do you make sure you're getting the desired and not the counterfeit Got it. and settling for that? And that's where getting the boundaries. So what's like an example of that? Yeah, so an example of that um, would be good versus nice. So we have a desire, you know, says that God is good. Jesus was, even when you look at Jesus, the life of Jesus, he was always good, right. but he wasn't always nice. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you can actually, you can always be good, but not always be nice. But you can't, you, but you can always be nice, but not necessarily good. Right. Because somebody could be, you know, just being nice, but they're being passive aggressive. Right. They're being selfishly uh, nice to win you over. And that's where, you know, I've heard a story of, um, you know, this girl, she, again, had this goal, desire to, to, to save herself for marriage, started dating this guy that had had s several past experiences, and he ended up, again, over a little short amount of time, ended up getting her to sleep with him. And the, the girl that was telling me this story about her friend, she was like, but, but I mean, the guy is, the, but he is, a, he is a nice guy. Nice guy. And I'm like, exactly. I'm like, no. <laughs> like, I'm being good. He's, he's, he's not. He's a counterfeit. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of those 14. I mean, it's just the same way. We also, just understanding, again, self-presentation, aesthetic display is that understanding counterfeits is that um, I could, you know, wear some Vans, mm -hmm. some, some socks to go up to the, to the lower calf, yep. put on some, you know, dicky shorts mm -hmm. and, and a black T-shirt, mm -hmm. and, and I could present as a skater. Right. But, and, and maybe you think, He's tall, lanky. Maybe he's a Tony Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But I can't skateboard to save yeah. my life. Right. But I could present as a skateboarder. Right. And so how do I act? So again, there's a thousand different ways that that can unfold in, in dating relationships mm -hmm. where are you getting the genuine real deal mm -hmm. or are you getting a counterfeit that's just presenting? This one's very important. I mean, as you're, it's funny. It's like every time you're talking, I'm thinking about all these different uh, counseling calls and people I've been talking to, but a lot of people date these representatives. Yeah. And, and they're posers, basically. In skateboard, what we call them posers. Yeah. And they pose to be something that they're not. And then these girls or guys, they get in these relationships, and these people turn into whole different people. And it, it started by them agreeing, like, oh, I'm going to, yeah, we, we're going to go. We love football, or we love doing this. And yeah. they're just being nice and doing this stuff, but yet they weren't, that, that wasn't who they yeah. were. And then they get married, and then that's when, you know, it hits the fan. Yeah. Yeah, so we're helping people to really actually know how to how to ask That's questions, great. how to discern yes. this. Even the difference between like chemistry and 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 faux chemistry, and so genuine chemistry versus kind of fake chemistry. So right. even you know a lot of people say you know we want to have chemistry, or they fall you know head over heels for this person in infatuation because they think they have chemistry. Mm -hmm. Well, really, this person is just kind of extroverted, gregarious, and flirty, mm. and swap you out with any other girl, and Same she's thing. gonna think that she has chemistry with him, yep. because he's just again, a flirt, flirtatious person. Right. So true chemistry comes from aligned values, emotional attunement, and kind of long-term potential. Yep. So it's understanding even like, what does true chemistry actually look like? Maybe it's even shared humor, but it's just being careful with the, the chemistry factor is genuine and long-term, mm -hmm. not just something that again, can be counterfeited and, and faked out mm -hmm. on a date or for several. Yeah, chemistry too also is, is just, you know, aligning your, your goals and your, uh, you know, like your relationship with God. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, the, I mean, that's the number one thing. That's what saves all marriages. Cause, and it goes back, it's funny because that, that verse keeps coming up, seek you first the kingdom of God. Yeah. Because as life gets crazy and, you know, you might be out of whack or whatever, it's always that God kind of keeps you together. That's the main, the main focus. And that is uh, missing in a lot of people's relationships because they are, they're not, there, there's people are different, and then they don't even have they don't they can't even agree on God. Yeah. So their belief system's all out of whack. Yeah. They believe in two different, you know, gods, if you will. Yeah. Or no god, you know. Yeah, and that ultimately is what you know dismantles it, rather than keeping them together. Mm -hmm. And so that's why that that vision of God and that co that covenant of marriage mm -hmm. 
comes under this idea. And this is why, you know, the idea of like leadership in marriage and the man being kind of the leader in the home is that really we kind of get make that out to be this really attractive thing is yeah. that in society we paint this glorious picture of leadership. But really leadership is all accountability, all responsibility. It's the pilot goes down with the plane, the captain goes down with the ship. Is that you got to have somebody that's willing to prioritize the relationship over the interests of the two people. And so that is, again, that God-given vision is that I'm willing to prioritize the health of this relationship over either my preferences or your preferences. Mm -hmm. But that's what keeps us central and on track. It's that North Star that, that is Christ that keeps us locked in. Dude, that's amazing, amazing. Okay, cool. So we have, I think we have run nine right now. Yeah, so. Six minutes. Yeah, <laughs> we're doing this. That's it. awesome. We're doing Heck it. Yeah. That's perfect. So, <laughs> so number nine is social support. Okay. So thinking about this in terms of the social support is your friends, roommates, mm -hmm. family members, life group members, whoever it may be. Right. But you're thinking about this social support because there's that whole idea of like, show me your friends and I'll show you your future. Right. So it's this idea of, is your social support, your friends, are they an asset or a liability? Because just like we were talking about the aesthetic display of who are you attracting and why, mm -hmm. but who is your friend group attracting and why? And that will play a huge factor in terms of like, I don't know why I can't meet any good people or I don't know why I can't meet any strong Christians, is that they're out there. I mean, we're in L.A. Is that there are some really amazing, I've met tons of them, yeah. amazing Christian singles. Yeah. They're out there. It's about getting plugged in with the right circles and going attending the right things right. where you can find them, but ultimately asking yourself, are they an asset or a liability? And so part of that too is also letting your social support group in on your must-haves and your can't-stands. Let them know what you're looking for and what you're not looking for. Let them know the kind of type of person, kind of relationship you're after, because then they can actually make healthy referrals. If you have a healthy social support team, you end up with healthy referrals. If you have an unhealthy social support network. Who knows what you're going to end up with. <laughs> right. <laughs> and then you got people matching you up for crazy reasons and going on dates with people you have no business going on dates with versus a really strong accountability system. Because really, ultimately, you're, the two biggest threats to dating and selecting wisely for a godly spouse is infatuation and physical intimacy. Yep. Is that if you combine infatuation with physical intimacy, it will derail things crazy fast and you'll end up with the wrong person for the wrong reasons. Yep. The two biggest um, beneficial factors are boundaries and accountability. So those, that's what you really want to have in place. And the boundaries and accountability help you to really navigate the infatuation and the, the physical intimacy. And when you have the accountability and boundaries, this is a space where you're not mixing up. Like, again, you're not getting into sex. You're not, you're not getting derailed. Mm -hmm. You're keeping God centered and you're hearing from God and God's confirming through this process as you're putting him first and he's center. He's going to confirm through the scripture and, and your heart and confirm to both people. And he's going to show you through the work of the Holy Spirit if this is the one. But if you don't have the boundaries and accountability and you're all out of whack, you know, we know that the, we know sin is the thing that breaks the connection to the Holy Spirit. Yep. And you can't even make the right decision because you're all, you're delusional basically on what's really happening. You're completely derailed. Yeah, perfect. I mean, it, it definitely, yep. I've seen, this is what we've seen over and over. Okay, 10. Number 10 is location. So thinking about where, where are you spending your time? You know, are you hanging out in a place where you're likely to find another Christian single? Uh, so it, it includes both the physical locations. You know, maybe that's the church you're in, involved in. And there's, again, we talk about a, a lot of safety things there because even at a big church, yeah. you know, you might have more opportunities. But if you're not dating in a biblical God-honoring way, then there's a lot of collateral damage. Because yeah. I've talked with people that work at, at larger churches where, you know, they say like, you know, these, this couple started dating and, and then they broke up. And the, the person to leave, you know, then one person feels obligated to leave because it's uncomfortable or awkward. Right. And they're like, well, the person that ends up leaving is your person that's like serving and the person that's actually yeah. healthy and the person you would, you would like to see stay. Right. And the person that stays is, is usually the person that's unhealthy and continues that process. Meanwhile, they're driving other singles out of the church because Very they're dating in an in a unhealthy way. So we kind of talk about the physical locations, things like that, but also the big one these days is online location, yeah, let's talk the about dating that. apps. So the dating apps we kind of get into in terms of, you know, what dating app are you on and understanding who's likely to be on that kind of a dating app and what are the intentions? Again, we go back to the why, intentions, expectations, 
and boundaries of the kinds of people that are on that particular style of dating app. Because the, the dating apps are crazy. I think the, the research I saw on 18 to 35 year olds was that the average is that people are spending, singles in that category, are spending on average about 10 hours a week on dating apps. Hmm. About 90 minutes a day. And they're doing it in about nine minute increments. Okay. So okay. if you think about really? sitting on the can, yeah. Yeah. flipping yeah. through profiles, yeah. <laughs> or yeah, yeah. at work breaks, or lunch, yep. or whatever it might be, they're kind of squeezing and just flipping through profiles. So it's also, again, you can build in some of that social support that we just talked about. So on a dating app, bring in your social support. Don't connect or, or go out on a date with somebody that your social support people haven't already approved of. Mm. So show them the person's profile, show them the communication and the messaging that you're having back and forth. Do they give down. you the green light for the next step? Mm -hmm. And that's where building in, again, boundaries and accountability yep, into the dating app experience, because that's part of the problem is people are dating really in the privacy of their own home. And they're making and, all and, these connections. And you're just looking at the face value, the shiny objects. Yeah, they're just, it's a catalog. Well, this is the end. But this show was fire, and there's so much information. I'm excited to read this, and I want to refer people to this. Absolutely, get Because, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of single people around, you know, the whosoever's moving here. We're at, you know, Calvary Chapel Diamond Bar, and there's a lot of single people here yep. that, are, that are looking at this, and this can save a lot of time. But I want to thank you for being on. Please plug the website to go. Yeah, so the, again, the easiest place for this course, go to the Instagram page, Divine Opportunity. Click on the link in the bios for the Kingdom Coupling course. And that'll take you to the page to be able to, to register, pay, and get started. And absolutely reach out to us. If you got just questions, you can mm -hmm. put the questions on our social media sites. The actual website is divineopportunity.com, which is kind of under works for this new ministry launch. And, and that'll be eventually the place to go as well. All right. Well, that was Dr. Ryan Magoo, PhD, uh, Divine, founder of Divine Opportunities Ministry. Dude, thank you. Thank you. All right. This has been The Ryan Reese Show. To connect and find out more about Ryan, click on ryan-reese.com. Check us out next Saturday at 9 p.m. for The Ryan Reese Show.